Hi everybody, this video is going to cover the mouth and throat anatomy. Now this is not going to be a comprehensive lecture, just as a disclaimer. It's going to be a basic introduction to the essential anatomy points during your anesthesia or ear, nose, and throat rotations. So let's begin. We have an unlabeled mouth here. We see our lips, which are being retracted by our retractors. You see our superior labial frenulum, followed by the gum or the gingiva. You've got your central incisors, the lateral incisors, your canines, your premolars, and your molar teeth. Next, you've got your hard palate, followed by your soft palate. So your hard palate is gonna be anterior part of the mouth, while your soft palate is gonna be the posterior portion of the mouth. Next, you've got the uvula, which dangles down from the top of the roof of your mouth. And you also see some pillars. So during your anesthesia or ear, nose, and throat rotation, you may be talking about the pillars. Let's, uh, let's label these. This is gonna be your palatoglossal pillar or, or arch, palatoglossal arch. In between your posterior arch, which I'll cover in just a second, you're gonna see a tiny little mass of lymphoid tissue. This is going to be your tonsils. So if you have a tonsillectomy, this is gonna be the tonsil that gets removed or a collection of lymphoid tissue. Next, you've got this posterior arch in the mouth. This is going to be your palatopharyngeal arch. Sorry, I can't talk and write at the same time. So your palatopharyngeal arch is gonna be in the posterior portion, while your palatoglossal arch is gonna be the anterior portion with your tonsils in the middle. Now, how did we get that name? Palato, so palate, so soft palate, hard palate, so it's closer to the palate. Glossal, so tongue related. Remember the tongue's in the, the anterior portion of your mouth, while your pharynx, so pharyngeal, is gonna be in the back of your mouth, so that arch is going to be further back. And then once, once you see kind of this structure here, which I'm kind of uh, pointing to, that is gonna be your pharynx or the posterior portion of your mouth. So let's advance further back. Here we see all the same things that we just saw. We saw our hard palate, we have our soft palate, um, and then we get back to our pharynx. Once we get down into our pharynx view, we're gonna see a few new structures. During your anesthesia rotation, you're gonna hear about the vallecula. It's not labeled here, but I do wanna to point to it. It's a space that's right in the posterior base of the tongue, between the, the base of your tongue and your epiglottis. So, vallecula. So, what you're gonna be doing is you're gonna be sticking your Mac blade, your Macintosh blade, down into the vallecular space, which is going to pry open your epiglottis. It's gonna lift that epiglottis up, because remember your epiglottis is going to be resting, kind of protect your windpipe. It's gonna make sure that no food uh, goes down your trachea instead of your esophagus. So the epiglottis is going to be protecting it. What you're gonna do is you're gonna shove your Mac blade down into your vallecula. That'll lift up the epiglottis and you can insert your, your uh, endotracheal tube down into your trachea. So you've got your pharynx, which is the posterior portion of the mouth. Then you've also got your opening to the larynx so that's gonna be more of your vocal cord, your vocal box in just layman terms. Um, and then behind that, so posterior to your trachea, you've got your esophagus. So during an intubation, what you're gonna be doing is you're gonna to need to access your endotracheal tube and stick it down in between your vocal cords. So let's go a little further. So here's kind of a view. Um, imagine if you took a hacksaw and you cut from ear to ear, just straight down uh, the middle of your head. If you started at one ear, trace it around the kind of the top dome of your head to the other ear. We're taking a sagittal, or uh, we're taking a coronal view of of uh, the mouth here, or of the back of the throat, the pharynx. So, pharynx is going to be up here. We have our supraglottic region. So, our supraglottic region is going to include uh, our epiglottis and uh, our piriform, sin piriform sinuses. Now, when we get to our glottis, we're gonna be talking about the vocal cords, which we have our true vocal cords here. And then below our glottis or below the vocal cords is gonna be our subglottis. This is gonna be um, where our endotracheal tube gets passed down uh, 
beyond the vocal cords. And then kind of down here, you'll see the carina and the further branches of the airway system. So this is just another view. Don't really want to go too much into detail about that. But here, so here's going to be our money shot in anesthesia at least, and ear, nose, and throat. So what are we looking at? We're looking at the vocal cords. So we're looking at the true vocal cords. Here we see abducted the vocal cords. This allows us to breathe. When they're open, air can pass through, we can breathe. And here we see them abducted. What's the point of this? This is where phonation occurs. We can create our language, we can create words, we can create noises when our vocal cords are abducted, um, creating different pitches based on how taut the vocal cords are pulled. So we have a lot of musculature around here. Also, I want to point out this kind of hat looking structure right here. This is going to be our epiglottis. Remember I said we shove our Macintosh blade or our Mac blade down into the vlecula, which is just, uh, just above our epiglottis. That lifts up the epiglottis, which normally covers this opening here. So imagine kind of like a, a, a can. You use a can opener, and before you pull the can top all the way off, it kind of hinges back and forth to cover up the can opening, and then lifts up to expose it. We're kind of lifting up the epiglottis in this view, which normally covers this opening. So our Mac blade is shoved down in there, which gives us this pretty shot. You shove the endotracheal tube always between the cords, and confirm beyond that, beyond the scope of this video. So again, here's going to be our epiglottis. It's that uh, covering which I just talked about. We've got our true and our false vocal cords. Um, we have our retinoid cartilage. So our retinoid cartilage. We've also got our posterior commissure, which is going to be this structure right here. We've got our epiglottic fold which is going to be kind of these right here and here uh, we've got our false vocal cord and our true vocal cord our false vocal cord is going to be the structure um, here while our true vocal cord is kind of in this highlighted region now when exposing normal mouth anatomy not everything's going to be this clear um, especially with solid lines drawn in. But I do think it is important to conceptually know what you're looking at before you move on to normal mouth anatomy. So um, kind of the important structures I've already pointed out. We've also got our anterior commissure up here. Uh, not as important. For the sake of a basic anesthesia rotation, as long as you can identify the epiglottis, the retinoid cartilage, and the vocal cords, you will be money. Here's my references that I used to make this video. All of the images were free. I just want to acknowledge where I got them. Otherwise, if you have any questions, be sure to ask. Um, like I said, this is basic anatomy for your anesthesia rotation.